Now it is the turn of Reverend Sister Grace Therese, the Superior General of CMC Congregation, to share with us the practical concerns, especially the sisters' communities face in the missions. Uh, Mother Grace Therese, CMC, has her education, especially in the, in the domain of, she, she had been a professor of education and he had, she had been involved for 21 years at St. Joseph's College of Teacher Education in Ernakulam. And I see that there is a gradual process of she coming to the top of the congregation, started as a local superior, then the provincial counselor, provincial superior, assistant general, and now she has assumed the responsibility of the entire congregation as a superior general with a vast experience in religious animation and having been accompanied a number of sisters in various ministries. I'm sure that Sister Grace Therese will share with us insights which are of practical interest and use to all of us. May I now request Sister Grace Therese to begin her sharing. Thank you. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Respected Father Sadhu Chakalakal CMI, SMRC President, dear loving superior general, spiritual superiors, and members from various religious congregations. Pope Francis' letter to the bishops of India, issued on 9th October 2017, explained in nutshell how the Christianity in this great country, India, led to the existence of distinct sui juris churches corresponding to ecclesial expressions of the same faith celebrated in different rites according to the liturgical, spiritual, theological, and disciplinary traditions. This historic document assures all in their jurisdiction for the Syro Malabar Church. Our Syro Malabar Church, which for centuries has been confined to the area between the rivers Pamba and Bharatapura, got freedom to undertake missionary work anywhere in India, as per the above said letter of Pope Francis. We accepted it as an opportunity to extend the possibilities for new evangelization and re-evangelization. And we have the, seen these years, the growth and expansion of the Sira Malabar Church all over India and globally. The former leaders and saints of the church will surely rejoice to see the joint efforts of the church to shape and renew the missionary work in the light of the evangelical spirit and the needs of the times, especially in the cultural and social context of Northern India. There are many possibilities open to us to carry out our missionary work through our presence, church activities, humanitarian service, life witness, and so on. In view of all this, the authorities invited the religious laity and priests of the mother church to step out with the greater zeal to the new mission areas. It is heartening to see how quickly the religious communities and dioceses responded to the call and reached to build up the kingdom of God in fresh areas. Are not the consecrated communities formed already in the Northeast, Punjab, and other states proclaim the vibrancy and missionary zeal of the Syro Malabar Church? Furthermore, how generously and hastily the priests embraced the invitation of the Syro Malabar Synod to the priest of every diocese, especially the young priest of the land to consider say, serving in our mission centers outside Kerala for at least two or three years. Another area exemplified by the missionary consciousness of the Syro Malabar Church is the method of adopt, adopting mission dioceses. Since then, many dioceses have already adopted mission dioceses. The religious communities are moving forward with great enthusiasm to make effective use of the new mission opportunities open to our church and to mark this zeal for mission. Pope urges all the three churches in India 
to be generous and courageous as they witness to the gospel in the spirit of fraternity and mutual love. Though the Pope has instructed the Zero Malabar Church authorities to sustain their ability, availability to the Zero Malabar faithful who took membership in the Latin Church, in, in many cases, tension and conflict exist in this regard. Consequently, the deserving people are not getting the privileges from the institutions and sometimes in sacramental life as well. Let me also reveal some of the ne negative aspects that the religious women experience in this context. Many dioceses of the Latin Rite in Northern India do not have multiple jurisdiction to date. For them, it is a new phenomenon. With the emergence of multiple jurisdiction, at least in some places, some challenges, obstacles, practical difficulties, and conflicts in the relationships have arisen. They cannot be seen as lack of ecclesial consciousness of religious. It has been many years since the missionary work started by women religious in the states outside Kerala. As a result, the sisters adapted well to the liturgy and canonical prayers of the Latin rite. Therefore, many of our sisters are unfamiliar with the liturgical celebrations according to the Siro Malabar rite. In this case, there is a lot of confusion and rift in the relationships when the Siro Malabar diocese or parish ask our own sisters to give up Latin liturgy. Let me point out another fact. Among the religious communities of the Siro Malabar Church, there are many sisters from Latin church, right? The rapid growth of the Siro Malabar parishes in the existing Latin parishes is seen by some of these sisters as a threat to their very existence. They feel a kind of uncertainty and insecurity. The knowledge about the historical facts and heritage of a church or a rite are confined to a few religious scholars or church leaders. It is not properly communicated to ordinary believers or women religious. Many of the sisters who receive the local vocation are not so much clear about the richness of the Siro Malabar Church. Very often, the reason for less cooperation or opposition from certain religious communities is that they do not receive satisfactory answers to the following questions. For example, what is right? How does the Siro Malabar rite differ from the Latin and Siro Malangara rites? Why can't we Catholics have just one right? Do we have the right of not belonging to any right and just be Catholics? What does Siro Malabar mean? Why are we known as Syrian Catholics? Are we from Syria? Then why do we extend the church to North India and other places? Why can't we remain only in the places of its origin? Why this new expansion in the 21st century? Why did we remain silent in all these years? Why now this new awareness and so on? Sometimes the Sira Malabar priests show their superiority and the believers approach the sisters anxiously when they hear that the Latin sacraments are invalid. There are also those who stand in dismay of such situations. The sisters of the mission areas also have the experience of being compelled to start institutions and convents where the Diocese of Siro Malabar uh, demands. Without giving them the freedom to initiate missionary activities, in accordance with the needs of the people in each area. In the context of multiple jurisdiction, there are some restrictions experienced on the part of bishops and priests of the Latin church in promoting vocations to the religious communities of the Siro Malabar church. It is unfortunate that they are interfering with the vocation to the religious communities that originated in different rites other than theirs. Due to the existence of multiple jurisdiction, the sisters are forced to give contributions to all dioceses, regardless of right. Let me also share a few practical suggestions. 
the cooperation of the sisters can be ensured to carry out the liturgical rites of the Syro Malabar diocese and parish in mission areas. At the same time, the leaders of the Syro Malabar church must realize the practical difficulties of our sisters who have been striving, serving in Latin parishes for many years. It is better to understand the current situation and act with patience, open mindedness, a generosity of heart, and to have a slow approach. There is no doubt that the division based on the rights and increasing tension will affect the fellowship and the survival of the religious communities as long as they accept the vocations of the Latin right. Therefore, all those involved must wake up and work to resolve the dispute between the rights peacefully. In order to give a deeper knowledge of the historical, spiritual, liturgical, and socio-cultural patrimony of the Syro Malabar Church, more attention should be paid to incorporate into the syllabus of the early stages of religious formation. As part of the ongoing formation, the senior sisters also need to be made aware of the current status of the Syro Malabar Church, the new developments and current issues. An atmosphere of appreciation for the richness and uniqueness of Syro Malabar Church is to be created in the communities. There is also an urgent need to raise awareness about this to the sisters who are working in Syro Malabar dioceses in the missions especially those who are from the Latin dioceses. Let us join hands with each other to work together for the betterment of the ecclesial community with a true sense of mission and collective participation without any discrimination of rights. Extending good support for the global missionary movement of the Syro Malabar Church and praying for God's blessings, I wind up. Thank you.